Europe was suffering from hunger and political and economic unrest. During the 19th century, 52 million people left the continent. In many cases, their home countries helped support the immigration of entire families to help alleviate poverty back home. The mass immigration required organized collection points on the European side of the Atlantic. Many people departed from Hamburg. After a devastating fire in 1842, the port city was rebuilt. The harbor was massively expanded, as were the shipyards. Hamburg became a gateway to the world. While sailing ships used to need two months to cross the Atlantic, by the late 19th century, modern steamships made the journey in just two weeks. A growing number of migrants were now arriving from Eastern Europe and the Balkans. The Hamburg America shipping line built a camp for them on the outskirts of the city. Passengers had to endure a 14-day quarantine. This prevented the outbreak of diseases on board the ships, which could cause people to be turned back in New York. Passengers traveling first class had their belongings packed securely in trunks. Their tickets cost four times the price of a lowest class ticket. But this is where the ship operators made their profit. Passengers were crammed into bunks in rooms with no windows. Emigration became a huge money maker. Ships took passengers west and loaded up with cargo for the return journey east. For many migrants, it meant saying farewell forever and a departure to the unknown. Thanks to growing competition among shipping lines, even third-class passengers soon had more amenities on their journey. At the same time, ticket prices dropped. In 1850, the journey cost an average annual wage. By 1900, it was one month's income. Families who couldn't afford to send everyone often sent the men ahead first. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, wrote the poet Emma Lazarus in honor of the Statue of Liberty, which welcomed the ships bringing immigrants to New York. But for those who hoped to achieve the American dream, there was still a hurdle to overcome. Ellis Island, island of hope and tears. Passengers of wealth or social standing were allowed to step off the boat and go straight to Manhattan. Passengers in third class were made to submit to a rigorous screening process. The initial interview took only a few minutes. The medical exam was an ordeal. This was what decided who would have a chance at the American dream. At first, only passengers suffering from disease were rejected. Later, the authorities also blacklisted prostitutes, the poor, anarchists, the illiterate, and Chinese people. Those denied entry were returned to where they came from, at the cost of the shipping company. On some days, up to 12,000 people were processed at Ellis Island. In the late 19th century, Germans were the largest group of immigrants, followed by people from Ireland and Britain. But many Russians, Hungarians, Italians, and others sought their fortunes in the New World. For passengers traveling in first or second class who went straight to Manhattan, the American dream was not such a reach.
The others who disembarked at Ellis Island had a more difficult path. But still, some rose to a life of prosperity in their new home. Levi Strauss, born in Bavaria, emigrated with his mother in 1847 and went on to make Levi jeans a mass consumer product. Heinrich Steinweg arrived in New York from Hamburg in 1850. He went on to become world famous for his Steinway pianos. Henry John Heinz, who invented tomato ketchup, was born in the US, but his father came from Germany as did another immigrant, Friedrich Trumpf, grandfather of Donald Trump. Before and after becoming president, Donald Trump campaigned for more restrictive immigration policies and for a wall along the border to Mexico. The vast majority of European immigrants arrived through New York, even those who planned to continue to the Midwest Immigrants who stayed in New York generally settled in specific neighborhoods, which became Little Italy, Little Germany, or Little Russia. Their children were automatically granted American citizenship through birthright. 